He okay. was like a month old and we came home from town one evening and as we pulled in the driveway, um, <laughs> there was a cougar standing on our doorstep staring at us in the headlights and twitching his tail angrily at us. And I just thought to myself, whoa, we have a little boy here. Like, it's not going to be long before this child is climbing the trees and running all over the woods. The Ready Light, into the country. Hi, I'm Nick Meisner. And I'm Lisa, his wife. And we want to welcome you back to the Ready Life podcast, where we help you get more independent for your basic necessities like water, heat, food, and the power that we so often depend on for these things. And today we want to talk a little bit about something that has been a integral part of our home, of our ranch, homestead, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> And that is our dog. I feel like a dog is an indispensable part of any property, any rural homestead um, for so many reasons. Yeah, I remember when we first decided to get a guard dog. We want a, wanted a big, bad, mean dog because our son was... I one year old. Was, no, he was like a month old or something because it was over at the rental still. Oh, maybe yeah, so. Yeah, okay. he was like a month old. And we came home from town one evening. And as we pulled in the driveway, um, <laughs> there was a cougar standing on our doorstep, staring at us in the headlights and twitching his tail angrily at us. And I just thought to myself, whoa, we have a little boy here. Like, it's not going to be long before this child is climbing the trees and running all over the woods. And we need to not have a cougar, you know, meandering around our, our yard. They're um, usually pretty wary of you and you don't even see them. But this particular one didn't seem to be <clears throat> terribly afraid of us. He just strolled off. Yeah. And... Uh, I very nearly, I came this close to <laughs> what, putting I'll, him six feet under. <laughs> yeah, because with, it just, cougars are the thing that everybody in this area, it's like, it's not the bears, it's not the moose, it's not the whatever, it's the cougars that mm -hmm. folks are concerned about. We haven't had any trouble other than that, that one. Ones. And, but it really, um, it really made us ponder or gave us pause about, you know, now we've got kids that are going to be yeah. wandering around. We need a bodyguard for them because we can't always be with them every mm -hmm. moment. And so it wasn't too much longer before we found Emma. And <laughs> she has been the most amazing dog. She's a German Shepherd, but mostly black. She's not a black one. So one parent was black and the other was the regular sable color. But we, so we looked for characteristics with the parents. We wanted to see the parents. That was like a non-negotiable yeah. for us. We said, we've got to see both parents because we've seen a lot of German shepherds that are just absolutely bonkers. They're just mm -hmm. out of control, wild, crazy, like I wouldn't want to get even close to them. And we wanted a dog that would be protective, but that would be more laid back and would also be gentle with children. Yeah. And we wanted, we wanted a dog where we could have company over and not worry about, you know, uh, her attacking company. Yeah. Now she'll, she gets really weary when somebody just storms onto our property and, you know, <laughs> she can tell the difference. She really right. can, which yeah. is great. So yeah, when we, when she was a little puppy, they still had, oh, I don't know, two or three, three or four, I, I don't know. They had a few puppies left and we met them in the parking lot of a grocery store and we said please bring the parents so they had the parents and the puppies in the back of the truck yeah. and nathan was one year old 
And so we wanted to see how they would relate to him. And so we put him there next to the puppies. And one of the puppies went and just headed over to a corner and curled up and took a nap. But Emma was like instantly, there was a connection there. And she focused on, on Nathan and she just stayed there and just watched him wherever, wherever mm-hmm. he went. And it was like, okay, this is, this is the dog for us. Yep, and she was, and she's been a good dog. In fact, just today, um, when we decided to record this podcast, I, we have little chicks here and I have, we've kept them in the shop, um, in a container. But um, just this morning, I brought them out and put them in our little outdoor brooder. And she followed me over here while I was getting the chicks set up out here. She followed me over and she laid down on the ground right here next to the brooder. (laughs) And she has stayed, she's been staying here the whole time, keeping guard over our little chicks. Now she's enjoying the love that we're giving her. Yes. But she would just lay yep. here and just keep just, guard. They were her new protectees. <laughs> and um, yeah, so she's, uh, I think one thing though is it has taken a lot of work. It hasn't just been this true. thing where it was like out of the box, you know. We have a great she, guard we dog. We have a great guard <laughs> dog. It was, a, it's been a lot of work with her because she of course had the puppy years and we really had to drill into her being gentle. Not that she was trying to hurt anything, but you know, those puppy years where they've got the sharp teeth and they're chewing on everything. And we had a one year old. And so, um, well, hey, Captain Sam. (laughs) (laughs) He's come to check it out. (laughs) Yes, how are you? So she would, you know, we had to really, really work with her. took a lot of patience and a lot of work to teach her that the kids are not chew toys, you know. <laughs> she would never... I wanted to wring her neck that first year. <laughs> yeah, once again, it was never any kind of a hard bite or anything. It was just the little puppy chewing things that she would do. And so that took, that took some time. And then with animals, when we first started getting... Well, I guess the, the cat was the first one. Yeah, the one. cat was the first so one. teaching her to be gentle and to uh, and be kind to the cat and of course they still have the the tom and jerry syndrome (laughs) thing going on you know where she loves to chase and mittens kind of likes being chased and you know our cat is named mittens she's got four white paws and so we named her mittens and so emma and mittens yeah they definitely have a thing going but (laughs) When nighttime comes, they both curl up in bed together and sleep together at night and keep each other warm. <laughs> they do. They truly, they truly do. <laughs> and um, so then with birds, you know, it, it once again, it's a training process. We couldn't mm-hmm. just, boom, throw the birds down in front of Emma or Mittens for that matter yeah. and leave them there with Mittens. It was more a matter of keeping her away until the birds were bigger than she was. <laughs> so they could chase <laughs> <Yeah>. her. <laughs> we did, there was a time or two where we put the fear of the birds in her. And yes, we kind of helped the birds a little. <laughs> yeah, where she was creeping close to one of the birds, and then I forget what we did, but we made some kind of a huge noise. <laughs> Loud gobbling noises and like crazy and man chased, chased her, her off. off. And, boy, <laughs> she ran for her she life. She scared to death of them for a while. <laughs> but with Emma, you know, it was... A matter of introducing them to her, letting her get close to them. She was so curious and wanted to smell them and everything and just letting her get close but in a safe Mm -hmm. environment. Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And now we don't worry about her at all. I think she knows that these are our babies and so she goes out of her way to protect them and Mm -hmm. make sure that they're okay and safe. Right. Um, And so now we have no worries about her (laughs) with the chicks around. Come here. Come here. I know it's okay. Yes. Come here. Yeah, you don't want to go there. there. All right, I gotta go grab a chick. (laughs) So that's just been a little bit of our journey with her. She she's been Nathan's shadow for forever. 
um, you know, ever since, you know, she just seemed to instantly know that Nathan was her, was her, the one, her charge. And um, she is so smart. I mean, in a way, she's kind of too smart. She can, like, sometimes outsmart us about things, and she knows what we're doing. And it, sometimes we have to even spell words around her because oh, yes. she's learned so much of the English language and, and knows what's happening just kind of intuitively. Mm -hmm. But she's been such a, such a good dog, and now she's nine years old and dealing with arthritis and stuff and which is really sad we've been sad to see her in a little pain we've been trying all sorts of things hopefully we'll find something that will get you know yes. give her a good quality of life for for a while longer but we've been thinking about maybe getting another puppy so that she can train in mm -hmm. the puppy but the thing that i so many folks are scared of you know in the country what do you do about bears you know or this Cougars. or that <laughs> this is this is the big question that we would often get when we're doing seminars in in a city and and folks are thinking about moving out to the country they're scared to death and it's like man you've got gangs around here you've got all kinds of crazy things going on, rioting and, and civil unrest and all kinds of things going on around you. And you're worried about the bears? Seriously. <laughs> but I get it. It's the fear of the unknown. It's whatever you're not used to. And so I understand. And the the simplest answer, I mean, there's there's all kinds of things that you can do. But I think the the simplest, easiest thing that everybody should do is get a good dog. Yep. A good dog and then really <laughs> oh, no. um, work with that dog to integrate it into your family. Because I've seen too many situations where people would get a dog and just fence in a yard and stick the dog back there. And it just turns into this crazy uh, yeah. creature that is just wild and uncontrolled. And it's like nobody wants to be around an animal like that. You know, one thing, though, that we did with Emma when she was a puppy, because um, dogs do tend to have that wandering mentality. They like to wander. Um, but what we did was we took, um, what was that called? Invisible that, fence. The invisible fence. We put We, we spent a good bit in the wire got a whole bunch of extra wire and we it took us it took us several days to get the wire all the way around into the woods on one side and you know all the way around our entire yard and our whole the, three acre clearing yeah here. we we did that invisible fence all the way around and we took several days probably more like a couple weeks training emma in to recognize the invisible line and yeah just to teach her that she needed to stay home that this was her guard this was her job and yeah she she has really thrived here um and we don't have issues with her wandering which we, is nice we did initially what prompted yeah. us to do that was a death <laughs> threat from the neighbor. <laughs> the neighbor not on us but on but her. on our dog yeah saying, <laughs> really if you don't keep your dog tied up then we're gonna mm. we'll uh, take care of her for you or something like that and um, you know it seems like a lot of times you'll have a neighbor somewhere in the neighborhood that even out here i mean here we are in the middle of nowhere and yes we uh, our a neighbor to us wouldn't seem like a neighbor to a lot of people yes. but it's a little ways away but she was still putting around making the rounds mm -hmm. and so that kept her home during those early years but then a few years after that the the line broke and we haven't even repaired it haven't needed it because uh, yeah. she had gotten that out of her system now she stays home yep. she's such a good girl but we did do some obedience training with her in the beginning mm -hmm. i think that was really really helpful we probably didn't do as much as we should have but yeah. we taught her basic commands but i think the biggest thing is just establishing the pecking order that you are the alpha and your dog is under you because mm -hmm. 
a lot of times I think when these dogs are out of control, it's because partly because they think that they are the alpha. Mm -hmm. And so anyhow, um, we're not dog trainers or whatever. So this no. isn't about a how to on how to train a dog or whatever. It's just more about how important it is to have a good dog. And it doesn't have to be a purebred. A lot of times mm -hmm. the mutts are smarter than the purebreds. In this case, not she so. She takes offense to that. Yes, in this case, that's <laughs> not so. This purebred is extremely smart. In fact, we could use, we'd a be- A little bit of dumbness. Yeah, a little bit sometime. dumber might be helpful, but that smartness is really, really good when you need her to be able to discern between what's a threat no. and what's not. I know you don't like it when they flap wings. <laughs> yes. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, um, having an, a dog on the homestead is just essential. Yes. Uh, one time we went camping without her, and I don't remember. Oh, I guess it was before we got her. I think her. it was before we got her. And we had a large group, had some dogs there. Everything was fine. And then the large group and the dogs left, and it was just you and me. Yep. And that night, we had a miserable night because <laughs> it was awful. of all things, the deer I know. came around and <laughs> were stomping their hooves just feet and snorting from us, at us snorting and... and everything and it was like i think it was springtime so they were kind of hungry not that they were going to eat us but they were they were wanting to dig wanting through our trash and, trash and all, all of our stuff. stuff and it's just like <clears throat> no get out of here <laughs> i mean it's not that deer are particularly scary but they're supposed to be scared of you and it was just a little disconcerting to have them in the middle of the night, we were sleeping out under the stars, coming around, stomping their hooves near us. It's like, you know what? I really appreciate a having a dog. <laughs> and so, yeah, we've, I think, always had a dog with Ever us since then. on a camping trip. So anyhow. She lives for those too. Yeah. So if you have a fear of wild animals, yes, absolutely. I definitely believe in in having uh, and doing your part to be physically prepared prepared for protection in a variety of forms. Maybe we'll get into that sometime, but I'm definitely a huge advocate for being prepared to defend your family and all of that sort of thing. But I think there's no better first step than a good dog. They're just- They're an indispensable yeah. part of a good homestead. And they're part of, become part of your family. So. Absolutely. Anyhow, I hope that's helpful in some way. Um, if you've got a fear of animals, this is a great way to go. And um, yeah, don't, don't let the fear of the unknown keep you from making a, a step that will be a, the best long-term move for your family. Mm. And um, there's often ways like this that you can mitigate those fears that you're dealing with and it adds so much to your life so, yes hope you all have a great week we'll see you next time bye, bye now